you're very active on twitter and i've seen that uh, take very bold stances <laughs> that too for a public person so <laughs> i i i love conversations yeah coming to otts uh, like amazon prime and netflix this is one question uh, that is that i've always had in my mind and uh, it's good i have someone who can uh, answer it what's the what's the economics of otts versus theaters in theaters it's pretty simple you make a movie people go the more more tickets are sold the more you get back how how does the economics of ott work so for us it is that you're not competing with hollywood for the same time right mm-hmm. okay i mean you can do all the work you want you know if a marvel movie drops <laughs> you know you're going to be in trouble right uh um, there hasn't been that much faith in nigerian films in cinema that would make people abandon you know their typical you know superhero films for them the only windows that we've had that have been really successful has been december the holidays and that's because yeah people will watch anything you know because they need to get out you know i i was also instrumental in opening the window for easter started with prophetess and then king of thieves you know and then you know more like that but it's been very tough so every other time any other time uh in the year you know you're not that, that guaranteed of great success also we have this issue where only about 30% comes to the filmmaker at the end of the day so think about that you have to figure out marketing you know you need to spend a lot more on marketing um and then 30% comes to you wouldn't you rather just put your film on the platform where they do all the marketing for you mm-hmm. yeah they position it in front of the audiences and you collect your money however that's not to say that we do not understand the significant effect of theater theater makes uh theater is branding you know for the filmmaker you know you really look like a big renowned filmmaker if your films are in theater right and there is some sort of even the the, the otts they want you to go to theater first you know generate some buzz for the film mm-hmm. before it comes on their platform you know so it's a there are pros and there are cons but what the otts are doing is that they are helping us spend more money because now there is some guarantee of returns and as a filmmaker as a business person you're going to need that guarantee we didn't have that guarantee with theater only then okay. because i mean if you're getting 30% you know you know that the only way you can make film is to make it really low and hope that people like it but now we're not thinking about it that way again we want to make it really big and hope that enough people see it So uh, how does the the payment from the OTT platforms work is it a fixed amount you get at the start or is it uh, or you know does it does it, it depend on the views it depends people have yeah people have different um, deals but you know license deals are pretty much fixed and agreed upon there is a deal that connects your performance in theaters with some sort of rate card you know that says hey if you make this amount in theaters you know then you're going to get this amount out from the ott some people have some pre buy deals where they say hey we don't care how much you make the film but this is how much we're going to pay you um and then there's a the third one which is you've made the film and then you're telling them hey i've made this really big film i don't want to put it in theaters do you want to take a look at it and sometimes they will look at it and say hey we like this this is i mean an example would be like gangs of lagos you know we like this this is really beautiful we can adapt it you know as one of ours and then they pay uh mm-hmm. typically they spread the payments across the year in four installments but it's you know that also kind of like helps you plan you know how, what to do with your money because you kind of know how that inflow comes okay well uh, all in all otts have been a, a huge blessing for overseas nollywood fans like me because uh, i mean i don't think i would have even seen nollywood if it weren't for ott exactly so if it that's, wasn't yeah that's amazing so uh yeah now let's let's talk about uh, ni akinmola and beyond filmmaking so uh you you're, you're very active on twitter and i've seen that uh, you you run a face by taking off people <laughs> so you you take very bold stances <laughs> that too for a public person so 
<laughs> I, I I love conversations, and um, we're gonna have to teach Nigerians that conversations are really important. You know, you don't have to be, and it's okay to have you know opinions, and it's okay to agree with things. It's okay not to agree with things. Um, but I I love to keep having conversations. I'm also very passionate about the industry, so I tend to speak a bit more about things that I mean I single-handedly have trained a sizable number of the people currently working in the industry right now, either in post-production or even in pro production until, until it's like the hub where people come to become better filmmakers and, you know, they eventually go off on their own and do great stuff. Um, but it's important also for me in terms of like understanding, you know, the vibe of the people it's important for me to talk. It's important for me to engage people, see how they respond. I put a lot of all that knowledge into my films, you know. Uh, if you study the House of Secrets very well, one of the things you will notice is that there is a similarity to how, you know, the movement, the opposition movement in the last election has approached some of the things they did. There was a lot of blind trust and blind following, which was basically what was happening in the mm -hmm. film. You know, nobody bothered to question, you know, Mrs. Lawahal, what were her intentions? Why is she doing this? How does she have this much information? But because, A, we want to put a female president in, you know, they, they lost track of some of those key questions that they needed um, to ask. You know, and also, it's also an industry where there's a, there's a lack of trust you know, and there's a lack of uh, accountability. So people have also attacked me in the industry because I tend to speak about how we do things, where the money is, where the money isn't. Some people think that I should keep all of all those things secret. You know, I don't believe there is growth in keeping some of those things um, secret. Um, it's also important that, you know, uh, when it comes to like engaging with like critics, you know, and people, it's constantly, it's important to constantly remind them you know where we are as an industry so that we don't lose track of how well we are doing you know if we spend so much time talking about how bad we're doing so yeah i, I love to talk and of course i always like to market my films myself so if talking to people get them to talk about my films then that's a win <laughs> interesting interesting so uh what are other things you like doing besides filmmaking when you're when you're not uh directing or producing or writing Oh, uh, <laughs> almost all the things that I like doing, I'd be connected to filmmaking, but I'm also a big technology aficionado. Um, early this year, I started a company, uh, you know, that I'm hoping to use to build products, you know, and applications to service Nollywood and, you know, media in general, because I really love creating stuff with um, technology. So that's something I've been really passionate about. Uh, I'm also really passionate about um, empowering a lot of young filmmakers, training and all that. So there's a product I'm releasing before the end of the year that is going to open up, you know, Nollywood filmmaking to anyone, anywhere in the world. You're going to learn about how we do the things we do. You're going to see us at work and, you know, you're going to be able to actually get as much data about the industry as you want. So those would be like some of the other things, you know, that I love to do. I mean, I spend all my time in the studio when I'm not at home, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's basically where we are. But I think there's a a thing that we might evolve into properly and it's that we really care about animation and family entertainment. So in the next couple of years, we might be pivoting into a lot of things like creating IP that we can merchandise, you know, creating IP that can become franchises for family and all of all that. We're launching a big one in, in August. It's called Mikolo. And it's going to be the first, you know, live action, you know, CGI, you know, for family and if that works, we're going to be doing a lot more with children um, going forward. That's a wrap for this video, but there's one more video where this chat continues. Do check it out.